we're in a good position from from a performance, from a power perspective. Our 65 nanometer is really beating the the comparable Intel 45 nanometers products today. In Q4, we get to Shanghai, and Shanghai gives us. 45 nanometer on the server. So that lead that we have in performance and power savings gets increased even more as we get into the back end of the year. So we feel very comfortable about where we stand competitively. Shanghai will, will bring us 45 nanometer. Um, you'll also get Hyper Transport 3. You'll get a larger cache. And you'll also get um, some, some improvements to the to the processor itself from the, the integers per cycle and whatnot. Um, what, you, what you will also see as we get into next year is about mid-year of next year we'll have the new Fiorano platform. And what you're looking at here is actually a reference design for the Fiorano platform. Now if you're familiar with, with Spider on the desktop and Puma on the mobile side, uh, after the acquisition of ATI, we really focused on delivering platforms for customers. Um, and there's, there's several different areas where customers have been asking for platforms. From, a, from an OEM perspective, they want a single point of contact, they want accountability, they want to be able to work a lot closer with their vendor. So instead of just being a silicon provider, being able to provide the silicon, the chipset, the reference design, um, helps them get to market quicker and helps them deliver a more robust, more reliable product. From a customer perspective, customers want to know that if there's an issue, there's kind of one throat to choke. They want to know that uh, it's not going to be the silicon guy pointing at the chipset guy and the chipset guy pointing back at the silicon. They want to know that if there's an issue, it's going to get resolved. And so platform has become a real important strategy in ensuring the best reliability and really the most convenience for customers. So we will be delivering the Fiorano platform about mid-year of next year. And the Fiorano platform will consist of obviously an AMD Opteron processor, but also the SR5690 chipset, Southbridge, um, this, I believe it's the SR5190. The new chipset will provide four key features for customers. Um, first, it will provide Hypertransport 3.0. So that'll be an increase in the amount of I.O. throughput that the system will have. Um, secondly, it'll support PCI Express Gen 2. So you get that second generation of PCI Express for higher throughput peripherals, things like our stream processor, for instance. Um, the third thing is it'll support hot pluggability for the PCI Express bus. So hot pluggability would allow you to remove an I.O. card and replace an I.O. card without having to take the server offline. And then the fourth thing that it provides is IOMMU support. And IOMMU is, um, is a functionality that allows the, the server to be able to virtualize the I.O. channels. So in doing virtualization today, you can virtualize memory and you can virtualize processors. This is really that kind of last step in, in virtualization give you better performance, better security for virtualized applications. Today without it, um, we've got chipset partners like Broadcom and NVIDIA, and so an OEM today can develop their own platform based on either an, uh, an NVIDIA or a Broadcom chipset. In the future, they'll have a third choice, which will be an AMD chipset. As you know, all of our processors' code names are Formula One racetracks, and for the for the chipsets, or for the platforms rather, they're all Formula One test tracks. So we have Fiorano, and then the follow-on to that is Marinello. So on Barcelona today, you have a two megabyte level three cache. When you get to Shanghai, you have a six megabyte level three cache. And any other things that do you, you think also it's... you also get support for 800 megahertz DDR2 memory, um, and then there's also some. Um, IPC improvements. So overall, we expect performance to be up anywhere, depending on the workload, you know, 15 to 30 percent, um, depending on what type of application you're running and what kind of environment you're in. When we deliver this platform, um, obviously you'll get Hyper Transport 3, and there will be, again, depending on how I/O sensitive the application is, you may see. Uh, a performance gain. I, I don't have those numbers to share with you today. We're not sharing those publicly yet, um, but we will be as we get closer <coughs> to the platform. Um, but at the same time, also in that time frame, at the end of next year, we'll also introduce the Istanbul processor, 
And Istanbul will be a native six core processor. And um, that will give you, again, a, an additional increase in performance, um, especially for those applications that are very well threaded. And we'll have Shanghai and Istanbul available simultaneously. So when we bring out the six core Istanbul, we won't kill off Shanghai. They'll continue because there will always be a need for, um, you know, for quad core. Beyond Istanbul, then, the next, the next generation of CPUs come out in the 2010 time frame. And there will be, uh, be many core, which is a 12 core processor, as well as Sao Paulo, which is a six core processor. That'll be a new socket architecture for us. Um, and so at that time, you'll see things like DDR3 come into the, uh, into the roadmap, and you'll also see additional hypertransport links being added. You know, for most server applications, people are not looking for you know, the highest performance in video. What they're really concerned about is um, having you know, low power and, uh, and really a lot of efficiency in the platform. But we do integrate ATI graphics in you know, for those customers that uh, they want to take advantage of that. If you did require, um, sometimes when people are doing high performance computing, they're doing visualization as well, and they want to be able to display. In that case, we do have PCI Express slots that you could put an, an additional video card in if you needed that. I think that that's probably the biggest misconception. If you look at the, the key workloads from a web perspective, um, in both 2P and 4P, we outperform Intel in the spec web benchmark. And so all the benchmarks that I'm going to talk about are all publicly available out on the web. They'll be in the presentation that, uh, that Phil will send over to you. Uh, but you can go and look them up and you can look at them. They're, they're benchmarks that are run by Intel and benchmarks run by us in a comparison. So it's not like I'm trying to run you know, an Intel benchmark and, and show you how poorly it performs. So we beat them in spec web in both 2P and 4P. Um, from a virtualization perspective, we deliver better performance lower power, and also we can do it at a lower cost uh, using the VMMark benchmark. In uh, database, if you look at shipping systems, TPCC benchmarks, we deliver greater performance and also better price performance. And if you look at HPC environments, uh, you'll see things like LSDyna, um, um, Fluent, uh, StarCD, which are three um, benchmarks used in the HPC world for manufacturing, for things like oil and gas, um, you know, crash analysis. We're ahead of Intel in all of those areas. And most importantly, our 65 nanometer product today is more energy efficient than their 45 nanometer product. That means that when we get to 45, that lead in energy efficiency gets even larger. So we feel pretty good about where we are today in terms of performance and also in terms of power efficiency. So to some degree, um, you know, the, the fact that we didn't get Barcelona out onto the market until uh, Q1 of this year, that, that led to an area where Intel had an advantage because they had a quad-core product out in the market and we didn't. I think the other thing is, I think if you look at a lot of, you know, Intel will publish a lot of benchmarks as well. They tend to rely on things like Pavre, um, they rely on things like Cinebench, and you don't see people in a data center running Pavre. You don't see people in a data center running Cinebench. What you see is people in a data center running databases, running web infrastructure, you know, running things like that, running HPC clusters. Those are the types of applications you see in a data center. And those are the types of benchmarks that you want to look at when you're trying to compare server performance. For us, it's about execution. It's about, it's about delivering to the schedule, delivering to the promises that we made to the customers. You know, we've got some ground to build back up from, from the introduction of Barcelona, and we plan to do that with Shanghai.